With this uh, emphasis now on this new variant, there's a new push now to get everybody vaccinated and maybe even get those boosters. We want to turn to Trevor Alt, who's joining us from a vaccination site here in New York. Trevor, good morning to you. Good morning, TJ. Yeah, beyond those travel restrictions, we're already seeing American officials take some swift action over fears of what could be coming. Here in New York, we're going to enter into another state of emergency this week so hospitals can increase their capacity over fears of a potential winter surge. And we were already worried about that with holiday gatherings and the Delta variant, but Omicron has really ratcheted these concerns up to an even higher level. This morning, health officials around the world bracing for the potential threat of a new COVID-19 variant, Omicron. First detected in Southern Africa only weeks ago, scientists say it has a concerning combination of mutations fueling fears it could possibly be more transmissible than the Delta variant. Cases have now been confirmed in at least a dozen countries, including Scotland, Portugal, and Canada. Now both Pfizer and Moderna are working to adapt their vaccines to fight Omicron if necessary, a process that could take two to three months. It does appear, again, very preliminary evidence that it is more transmissible. We don't know for sure. We really have no data on severity, whether it's as severe, light, milder, or more significant. The World Health Organization has labeled this a variant of concern, tweeting out Omicron is a highly divergent variant with a high number of mutations, some of which are concerning and may be associated with immune escape potential and higher transmissibility. And while there's no confirmed cases in the U.S. right now, experts say the variant's arrival here is a question of when, not if. The Biden administration's new order banning travel from several countries in southern Africa takes effect today. And many other countries have instituted similar restrictions to try to slow the spread. Over the weekend, we learned Dutch officials are looking into an outbreak aboard a pair of flights out of South Africa to the Netherlands. The 600 passengers on board weren't tested on takeoff, but were when they landed, and 61 infections were detected, with at least 13 determined to be the Omicron variant. New York Times reporter Stephanie Nolan was on board. She tested negative, but is quarantining voluntarily. There were a lot of people just unmasked and standing too close and just really not uh, taking any of it very seriously. Even when the ambulances and the guys in the hazmat suits showed up at the back of the room to start taking away the positive cases, uh, that didn't prompt anyone to put a mask on. Now, we should mention one of the first doctors in South Africa to flag this variant says so far she has only seen it cause mild illness. But she says, of course, that could still change. And the World Health Organization says while there's still a lot of uncertainty here, they know enough to say the global risk of Omicron is very high. George. OK, Trevor, thanks. Let's bring in the president's chief medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci, thanks for joining us again this morning. Still no confirmed cases in the U.S.? No, not at all, George. No confirmed cases, but obviously we're on high alert. The CDC, who does that kind of surveillance, is very, very on top of this, looking for this. As you just heard from, from what we've just uh, announced here, it's inevitable that sooner or later it's going to spread widely because it has at least the molecular characteristics of being highly transmissible, even though there are a lot of things about it that we do not know, but that will be able to be ascertained in the next week or two, I believe. What do you make of these reports out of South Africa, also Israel, that the symptoms that come with Omicron may be milder? No, no, I, I think that's premature to say that, George. We just do not know. I was on a Zoom call yesterday with our South African colleagues who have been extremely cooperative and transparent in helping us to understand this that we really don't know. They have a bunch of patients that they're following very carefully. And when I asked them specifically that question, they said that they will know in the next week or so as to what the severity is. But remember, there are three different kinds of individuals there. There are those who've not been vaccinated. There are those who've been vaccinated and there are those who've been infected and recovered. So the real question is how does this particular virus affect with regard to severity any of those groups? That's going to be important, and we'll know that, as I mentioned, in about a week or two. I know you briefed the president yesterday. We're going to hear from the president later uh, this morning. Should we expect more changes, more restrictions? No, I, I don't think so at all, uh, George. Right now, uh, the important thing that I've been saying and that all of us have been saying on the medical team is that we just need to make sure that we know we have tools against virus in general, this SARS-CoV-2. 
A variant like this, although there's a lot that we don't know about it, one thing we do know is that vaccinated people do much, much better than unvaccinated people. And particularly when you boost someone, George, who's been vaccinated, you get the level of antibody very, very high, much, much higher than the peak level following the initial vaccination, which is the reason why we're emphasizing right now that when you get a high level of antibody, we've known with Delta that it spills over in protecting a wide variety of variants. So we don't know exactly what's going on with this variant, but I would assume, and I think it's a reasonable assumption, that when you get vaccinated and boosted and your level goes way up, you're going to have some degree of protection, at least against severe Let, disease. Let's talk about the booster. If people are sort of on the cusp of whether to get the booster now, should they wait for the vaccine to be tweaked for Omicron? No, not at all. If you are within that category where you are six months or more following the initial mRNA, the Pfizer or the Moderna, or two months or more following the J&J, &J, I would strongly suggest you get boosted now and not wait for the next iteration of it, which we might not even need. We're preparing, the pharmaceutical companies are preparing to make a specific booster for this. But we may not need that because we can find out, and as I mentioned, George, we'll find out reasonably soon whether higher levels of antibody against the original vaccine that we've used, whether or not that can spill over in protection against this, at least against severe disease. I don't think there's any doubt from what we've seen in South Africa that this has a transmissibility advantage. In other words, what they're seeing in South Africa is that it has a high degree of transmissibility. But the extent of that, again, still needs to be worked out. We'll know soon. Dr. Fauci, thanks as always for your time and your information. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.